Hi, my name is Carrie Clark. I'm a researcher at the University of Missouri Bradford Research Center. Today is October 23rd, 2013. Last night was our first light frost for the year. The field I'm standing in now is our summer cover crop study. We planted wheat in this field last year and harvested the wheat on July 3rd. On July 5th, we planted summer cover crop. These include Thespania and sun hemp, which are both tropical legumes, which means they fix their own nitrogen. We also planted buckwheat, cowpea, which is also a legume, buckwheat is not a legume, sorghum sudan grass, and then a mix of all those. In uh, August 15th, we also planted tillage radish, bursium clover, and crimson clover. Now the first group I named, the sun hemp, suspania, cowpea, sorghum sudan grass, and buckwheat, those will all winter kill. The uh, Tillage radish will also winter kill, but the burst seam and the crimson clover will overwinter and have good spring growth and provide nitrogen. These crops will be followed by corn in the spring. Um, so what we're looking at in this study is how well these cover crops control weed and how well they add to soil health and help the corn that's planted in the spring yield better. So let me walk through some of the cover crops we have. This is the uh, sorghum, or this is the sun hemp. Um, this, so this grows about six feet tall, and um, it is a, it, it puts on a flower. Like I said, it is a legume. puts on a flower. Uh, however, it's pretty late flowering and doesn't appear to put on uh, seed pods here. So it makes a really nice t cover crop because it doesn't become weedy. It has bursim clover planted into it. If you want to get a close up of this. Um, actually, what you see here is more henbit and uh, some other things growing in here. Uh, looks like we got some wild mustard, and there's also vetch that reseeded itself from the previous year. But the uh, bursim clover won't doesn't do much in the fall. It comes once the henbit starts to die out in the spring, you'll see a flush of the bursim clover, and it lasts so chill, probably beginning of May. This plot is uh, crimson clover. Again, we're not seeing, you don't see a whole lot of fall growth in the overwintering uh, legumes, but they do really come on in the spring. So when you're looking at winter legumes or winter cover crops, you wanna make sure, or actually summer too, all cover crops, you wanna make sure you're using annual crops. So your white clover and your red clover are not annual clovers and they can become weedy very easily. Your crimson clover and bursim clover are annual clovers so they will die out each spring. Um, they can reseed themselves if you let them go to seed, which is kind of nice because you don't have to buy seed the following year if you're planting, if you're wanting the same cover crop into the same place. Behind me on this side is sorghum sudan grass. This makes excellent, uh, an excellent cover for weed control. It also puts on a lot of biomass. So in the spring, when we mow this, over, when we mow this and till it in for our corn crop, we will have added a lot of organic matter. The sun hemp also adds a lot of organic matter. This crop is the iron and clay cowpea variety. Uh, here, this is this is very late in the season. Um, you can see it's provided fairly good weed control on this plot. Um, this variety of cowpea is very late flowering, uh, and I think it does not actually flower here in Missouri, um, it is so late. So again, there's no chance of it becoming a weed because it does not reseed itself uh, due to its late maturity. So we have had excellent uh, results with the cowpea, uh, good weed control, and it is a legume and fixes nitrogen. The residue of the of things like cowpea and buckwheat has a very uh, high or very low C to N ratio, so it does break down very quickly, whereas the sorghum sudan grass has a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio, so the residue lasts a little bit longer, and you will end up getting more organic matter build up with the sorghum sudan grass than you would with like cowpea or buckwheat. Sun hemp is kind of in between. It has kind of a, a, a almost woody, pretty thick stem, so it's gonna have um, a little bit slower breakdown, and that's what you want for building organic matter, is you want your breakdown of your residue to be a little bit slower. This is a plot of tillage radish. Um, so this is, you can use any Daikon radish for, for, uh, as a tillage radish. This is actually the brand name of tillage radish. Um, so this is planted at 2 pounds per acre on August 15th. Um, we probably, it actually looks like maybe we put on a little bit too thick, uh, but 
It is providing, as you can see, excellent weed control. The only, there is one issue with the tillage radish though, because it's planted in late summer and it grows in the fall and it does winter kill, but it uh, inhibits the growth of the henbit. So when the tillage radish dies after frost, you will actually end up with bare ground it, because it has inhibited the winter annual weed, which is henbit. So bare ground is not really a desirable thing. We'd really like to have the ground covered throughout the winter to improve soil health and to decrease erosion, protect the soil and, pr and give microbes food to eat. So tillage radish by itself may not be the best alternative for a cover crop. We're going to show you in a minute where we've mixed tillage radish and some cereal crops and that may be a better thing to do. So if you want to look at some of these tillage radishes, as you can see, they get extremely large. You guys have probably all seen pictures of people holding up very large tillage radishes. And the nice thing about tillage radish is that it also has a very deep tap root. Now some people say it will break up compaction. We found that um, you know once it hits the clay pan in our, in our northern Missouri soils, then normally it doesn't go through that clay pan. But it does prevent, it do, this, will, this tuber will rot in the winter and it will leave a large hole. So come springtime, Come springtime, you know, you've, you've loosened up the soil and you've allowed, you've given areas for the water to infiltrate into the soil. So there are some, you know, there are some nice features of tillage radish, but I don't really recommend it as your only cover crop you use because it doesn't provide much organic matter. It really doesn't do a whole lot to build soil health. Um, this, this residue breaks down very quickly. So we really think it's better if you add a, if you're going to use tillage radish that you add a cereal crop to it. But for the, um, the tillage radish works well if you cut corn for um, silage because you have a little window of opportunity there in August to get tillage radish planted. <coughs> but if you're com if you're coming after wheat with a cover crop, we really recommend the cowpea or sorghum Sudan grass or buckwheat or. Um, Suspani or sun hemp. Those are all much better when you're following wheat with the cover crop. Okay.